So if there's one thing I hate, it's when um, something I've set out to be to be good and interesting turns out not to be that good or interesting. Um, I mean, the whole point of, of this channel is to kind of try to provide information on the spirits uh, that people may not necessarily, you know, turn to first in their in their explorations, and to kind of, you know, lead them into it, give them some context, give them some information on. Uh, what they should be looking for and what they shouldn't. And so when I build something up and it turns out not to be great, uh, I, I feel like I'm, I feel personally disappointed. Let me put it that way. So, um, and I kind of want to get revenge. Um, so a couple months ago, I did a review of this, uh, Balam Resia from uh, a couple of Corrientes in Jalisco. Um, they're Costa, apparently, uh, and I did not like it at all. I've been using this, well, I've been trying to use this as a, like a deglaze, um, for my cooking, but it doesn't actually even work well for that purpose. So, um, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it. It's not so terrible that I want to just throw it out, but it's, it's, it's not my favorite thing in the world. And the worst part of it is it makes ricea kind of look bad. So what, what I did immediately was I went out and grabbed some more ricea to try to kind of, you know, show you, by the way, that the category can be awesome. Um, Ricea, of course, the other uh, important spirit coming out of Jalisco. Everyone knows about tequila, right? You know, um, even the people in the store, you know, just buying their, you know, 1.75s of, uh, you know, Casamigos, God help them. Um, they know a little bit about Jalisco spirits uh, and, and tequila, but, um, Ricea is, is a little bit more rustic. So you're heading out west towards towards the coast. You're dealing with a different set of, uh, of agaves. Um, and uh, you're dealing with this different distillation techniques. You're using um, these sort of very um, cool, very basic rustic stills that are sometimes called Filipino stills, or they, they really shouldn't be. Um, that's another long discussion. Uh, and you're getting, you're getting some clay stills sometimes. Um, and you're just getting a much smaller scale of production. Um, so I, I, I think, you know, if, you, if you've spent your time in, in Oaxaca or sort of any of those other places, and you're kind of looking for something a little bit different, try Ricea. It's definitely interesting. And, it's, you know, especially if, you're, if you've spent some time in, in a lot of, too much time maybe in tequila, and you're looking for something a little bit different, definitely hop over and try some Ricea. So what I've got here to try to re redeem the category after... Um, after the balam, is uh, I have a ricea from Estancia, um, which is also a, a, um, a line of wines, which I don't like very much, but uh, this is a very interesting little ricea. Um, more on this in a second. And I've got Las Perlas uh, de Jalisco, which is a little bit more expensive, but uh, um, kind of worth it. We'll, we'll get to this in a second as well. Uh, actually, we'll get to these now. All right, I'm going to pour some of this Estancia and tell you all about it. All right, this is uh, lot number 18 of this stuff. So this is from a town called La Estancia. Um, double distilled, I think in copper stills, um, n naturally fermented, so wild wild yeast, and uh, uh, cooked in a, in a, in a, a um, oh, what are they calling it? Um, uh, in an adobe oven, so a clay oven. What's fun about this is the agave. This is uh, Maximiliana. This is an agave you do not really find in Oaxaca, or I mean, you probably find it somewhere else in Mexico, but it really is kind of a, a, a Jalisco Coast kind of thing. Um, it, it really delivers very different flavors from uh, kind of really kind of any uh, agave I can think of. And what else can I say about this? Uh, they actually do not mention who the master distiller is, um, but it is it is bottled. Oh, did I mention it's bottled at forty five percent alcohol? This is bottle number one thirty four out of uh, I don't know. Um, uh, anyhow, so but you know, good good presentation, and it's not that expensive. You should be able to, and it has reasonable di distribution as well. All right, uh, here we go. On the nose. <laughs> the nose on this is is priceless. 
this smells like lime juice. I mean, it really just, just that's like 90% of what I'm getting is lime, is like just perfect, beautiful lime juice. Um, lime juice and more lime juice. Uh, beyond that, there's some a little bit of basil. Um, some like wet rocks, maybe wet limestone. Uh, some light white flowers, some um, maybe like something about this reminds me a little bit of like like white Bordeaux, um, maybe a more semion heavy white Bordeaux. I'm sorry, does, does anyone hate it when I do like wine geek things in these reviews? Because that's an that's an important reference point for me, and I just I find it useful. A little lemon peel in there as well. Not so much lime peel, but definitely some lemon peel. Actually, there's some lime zest. Don't ask me what the difference between lime zest and lime peel is, but, you know. Beyond that, I mean, just key lime pie, you know, smoked lime, lime soda, lime candy, all the limes are in this. You, you could accuse this of being a little bit narrow in, in its flavor profile, but I find it totally delightful. This is, this is kind of great. Yeah, this makes me very happy, this nose. Um, on the palate, yeah, same kind of thing. Um, sweet key lime pie with, uh, with a lot of, you know, Smothered in, a, in some basil and a little bit of mint. Um, there's a lot of minerality on this too. There's some 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 uh, kind of um, a rocky character. It kind of reminds, but the, the sweetness is definitely playing into that. It's like a good demi sex champagne or something like that, like a like a like a um, like a Bilicar Samon or something. Kind of a gentle smoke, like a, like you set some, not wood on fire, like a, like you set a stack of dry paper on fire, like newspaper, you know, that kind of thing. Um, smoked lime, uh, smoked lime, again. Um, more rocks. And just limey limeness. Uh, White flowers, white pepper. That's kind of all I got. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. there's a little splash of seawater in there too. It's delightful. I, <laughs> I really like this. Um, again, you could accuse this of having, you know, a, sort of a narrow uh, breadth of flavors, but I mean, that's that is not a bad thing. There is, there are some summer afternoons. I know we're, now summer's coming to an end, but. There's some summer afternoons where I would like nothing better than to reach for this and, you know, throw some in a glass with a, in a, in a chilled glass, um, and enjoy, or even mix it with some, some Coca-Cola for, um, a little bit of, uh, of heresy there. Um, this is terrific. I could see this being a terrific, uh, a great shooter, a sipper, sorry, not shooter. Um, but also something for the, for mixologists to play around with because the flavor is, this, this is totally unique for all the agave based spirits that I've had. Nothing, I mean, I've gotten lime before. I've never gotten this, you know, degree of just straight up lime juice, lime pie attack. And I'm totally digging it. Uh, I'm going to give, give it a squirt of water and we'll come back in a minute. There we go. And on to the to the uh, the parallels. All right. So this is not inexpensive. Um, uh, we're pushing on you know hundred bucks or so, which is a lot to spend on a category where you may not have tried this stuff before. So. If you're leery, I understand. I do. But don't give up on this just yet because it has got some 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 stuff to show you. All right. This is from uh, uh, 
the Hacienda El Divisadero, um, again, in, uh, along the, the coast of Jalisco. Uh, and it is composed of, uh, what do we got here? Two different kinds of, of, um, of agave. So called the Amarillo and, and Verde agaves, which is basically um, uh, Rhodocanthia and ang Angostifolia. And mm -hmm. if you never heard of those, they are Espadine and uh, Mexicano in, in uh, Oaxaca. So Espadine, most common uh, mezcal agave by a long way. So this is not going to be as far a flavor profile as, as this thing is. Um, uh, what's fun is, is uh, the, the, the details, right? Um, so we got, so it's wild fermented for almost two weeks, uh, roasted in, um, in a traditional, you know, stone oven, wood fired stone oven. Um, this is lot seven, by the way, made, uh, April, 2017, uh, 498 liters produced, uh, from, uh, NOM 142. And what else do I say about this? Oh, uh, it's a bit fun that they seem to have uh, two different uh, master distillers, uh, Don Florentino uh, Carvajal Ramirez and Don Jorge Carvajal Diaz. So um, I'm not sure exactly the setup of the, you know, the, the power structure of the distillery, but um, you know maybe it doesn't really matter that much considering what's coming out of it. Bottled at 48%, so plenty strong. Oh God. The nose isn't even the best part of this and the nose is very, very good. You can get the long fermentation right away. This smells, um, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a floral depth to this, which is, which is really extraordinary. Um, it's killer. Lemon peel, sweet cream butter. Some some green stuff like uh, um, like vegetable stems like um, um, uh, oh what what am I thinking about like um, you know how you how you you'll buy some vegetables and they're still they're still on the stems and you like pull your pull your vegetables off the stem as you're as you're making them but then you have still have the stems left over and usually they'll go in the trash but you, what if you like smelled those that's kind of what I'm getting. Um, like burning foliage, like like just burning, you know, fall twigs and leaves. And like, a, what is that? Something lemony, but almost candy, um, lemon candy, or more, no, more like um, uh, like if street side lemonade wouldn't be my like. So if you were like me. Uh, you you tried to sell lemonade on the side of the street as a kid, and you you tried to do it right, right? You would you would get the you get actual lemons, juice them yourself, so your hands like smell like like lemon for for hours. Juice them yourself, add the sugar yourself, do the, do all the mixing up, and then you you had to drink it all yourself because you lived in the suburbs and no one was going to buy anything from you. That's the kind of, of flavor. So so like street side lemonade, um, real stuff. I mean, it's it's intriguingly smoky. It's 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 not a sort of upfront in your face smokiness like a Del Magade Vita or something. It's much more subtle than that. Like yeah, like leaves, twigs, a little coal smoke, like old ash, um, some almost like a like a fern smell. Like you smell, uh, you stick your head in a fern and just smell it. Like a morning dew thing, like um, yeah, just dew on the grass in the morning. A little zip of like a cranberry, um, almost dried cranberry maybe, and um, some like a just throw us a, a shot of like Port Charlotte in there. So like peaty whiskey, but but more you know, acid driven, mineral, uh, um, smoky, less peaty whiskey. If that makes sense, and and some and very floral too. There's a lot going on in this nose, and again, the the nose is not the best part. What is the best part? I'm about to show you. Oh my god! Oh, 
I could drink bottles of this. Um, <laughs> I really could. Like, seriously, if you, like, um, told me, I'm, I'm sorry, but you're only going to be able to drink less Perlas for the rest of your life, I feel like I would, I would be a little sad, but, I, you know, I couldn't pick a better bottle than that. This is just so deliciously drinkable. Um, Flavor-wise, let me try again. I mean, let's start with, like, high-end Chenin Blanc. Like, the best Vouvray you've ever had. So, you know, like a lemon spritz on rock candy and, like, flower smoke, like burning flowers on, like, beautiful mixed honeys, um, like foliage smoke again along with the flower smoke, parsley, fresh mint. God almighty. Lemon peel, again, gravel, heather, um, some apricot, a little like, uh, um, you know, like orange bell pepper, a little orange bell pepper, um, pink peppercorns, and the, and just this beautiful, crisp, light tart, but at the same time, kind of peppery, smoky, refreshing finish that just goes on and on and on and on. Um, I, I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> bravo. This is, this is absolutely stunning. Um, could I, you know, maybe name more profound spirits than this? I mean, sure, but this, this is just so drinkable. This is so sessionable. Like I said, I could kill bottles of this, you know, easily, easily. I'm going to give this a little bit of water and we'll come back to it. Um, amazing quality um i know it's expensive it's it's worth it's worth every penny just it just is it just is all right i mean there's a there's a point at which i, I in my scores i usually just focused on how objectively how good i think the thing is and and i try to keep you know the the session ability the drink ability in the in the commentary this is a this is a point where this is a product where the sessionability, the the sheer deliciousness factor, kind of itself becomes the quality of the thing. This is so good. Um, oh, it's, all right, I'm gonna have to force myself. I like the Estancia a lot, and I'm forcing myself to go back to this first glass. It is an act of will. All right, the Estancia with a little bit of a uh, with a little bit of water in it. Oh, it's still limey. How about that? Yeah, just still lime heaven. Um, a hair bit more minerally th than before. Um, the sweetness also comes out, so it's a little more pie-like this time. Otherwise, not a whole lot of devel development, and I honestly don't care. It was nice to begin with, and it's still nice now. On the palette... Mm. But on the palate, something's shifting around a little bit. Lime is still there. It's definitely there on the arrival, but then it kind of fades in this more aggressive, interesting, um, kind of vegetal celery smokiness. So like celery mixed with uh, uh, like like Balkan-style pipe tobacco with a little bit of Latakia in there. Um but still quite sweet on the on the back end. The, the lime candy is still in play and very approachable too. I mean, this would be this is great sessionable stuff. It's just losing out because it's it's next to the to the parallels here. Um, lime, I love lime. I'm going to give this an 85 out of 100 on my usual ranking scale, and a, and a hundred out of a hundred on the lime scale. Uh, I like this a lot. 
Um, and if you if you are just looking for something very very different, this is this is a good candidate. Um, okay, but moving on to and what is you know kind of the star of the show, um, the Paralus. Um, with a little bit of water. Here we go. Okay, uh, the smoke has come to the fore and it's more kind of interesting and aromatic now. So, you, so we're getting sort of a, like a burning lemon kind of thing, like you set some lemons on fire, but there's also a definite incense note. That's interesting. It's more, it's more vegetal, oops, sorry, more vegetal and grassy. Well, at the same time, um, still coming across as quite sweet. That, that's kind of buttery note is still there too. But again, the real star is the palate and here we go. I would, you know, it's candied, smoky, lemony, black pepper. Oh God, this is good. All right, I'm just, I'm just drinking this. It's just shamelessly de delicious, this stuff. Um, it's so beautiful and balanced and kind of just, the, the the bitters and the sours and the sweets are kind of just playing and the, or, or the little herbaceous notes are just playing off each other so beautifully oh this is terrific um you could actually use this to convert people over to agave i, I could i could see that happening very easily um and again you know it's not just that the quality is very high because the quality is very very high but these the sessionability aspect of this, which I sometimes talk about, um, is off scale. So this is a 90 out of 100, sort of on my normal rating system, and scores like 112 out of 100 for, you know, drinkability. That's how good this is. Um, and that's how drinkable this is. I have to be very, very careful with this bottle. Um, yeah, so that's Ricea. Uh, Ricea is awesome and well worth your time and, and exploration. Um, there's other stuff out there. There's the uh, Venenosa stuff, which I haven't tried yet, uh, especially the uh, the upper level ones that are clay distilled. They are on my list. I will get to them one of these days uh, because I'm very curious, especially after how good, how darn good these guys are. Uh, thanks for watching and I uh, hope this was helpful and cheers.